Welcome to Contact. We're so glad you joined us today. And we are on our last message of this series titled Exportable Faith. And um, if you haven't been able to see any of the others yet, you know, you can go to our website and all of the rest of the series will be there. But today, our final uh, series title is Are You Connected? And so you'll see how that relates to being able to export your faith. Right. Uh, connection is vital. Right. Right. So it, it's a personal connection with the living God. And then when you, uh, if that's what's going on in your life, you'll be able to export that to other people. He, he makes himself understandable. Right. Yeah. Well, we are excited about this today. I hope you will stick with us and we'll see you in just a minute. Faith Landmarks Bible Institute invites you to come celebrate with our FLBI students and graduates at this year's FLBI graduation on June 2nd at 7 p.m. For more information, head over to flbi.org. Messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. Welcome back. Really glad that you're with us today. Hope you've had the opportunity to have joined us for this entire series. The series is called Exportable Faith, and today's title specifically is Are You Connected? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about being connected to God. Right. That's actually where we got the inspiration for the name of the broadcast, Contact, so that people could come in contact with the living God. Come in contact with His Word and uh, grow spiritually, grow uh, naturally, um, receive healing, um, you know, grow uh, intellectually, you know, because when you use the Bible as your reference point, which we talked about before, um, it makes you a wise person. Yeah. Yeah. If you receive it, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, you have to listen and, uh, and act. You have to hear and you act. You have to listen and you have to act, yeah. right. So today we're talking about are you connected? Are you connected? What happens when you're connected? One of the things, see, when you get around Jesus, what you discern about him is he's relatable. Mm -hmm. He's understandable. Right. And, and so one of the things he did in his earthly ministry to connect with the people of that generation is he told parables. Mm -hmm. So we, we're actually going to read a, a portion of a parable here. Right. That yeah. he said. That he said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he used these, these simplistic things to relate to the masses, so to speak. Right. And in these few verses that we're going to read is uh, a capsulization, really, of the outworking of uh, you know, being connected to him, say, right. which is what we're talking about. So I'm very excited about this particular passage of Scripture. Right. I have another one to read later. So this is John uh, 15. I'm going to begin. we we'll just pick up one verse right here. At verse 5, it says, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. So in other words, the fruit is born by the branches. That's connected yeah, to for, the vine. <laughs> then he says, for without me, you can do nothing. Wow. Yeah. Now that, you know, that, that's a strong statement. Right. And there's a lot of people who would rebuff a statement like that and yeah. say, 
I, you know, what? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when I read that, I read that I can't do anything without him. Yeah. And he said, Jesus said, I can't do anything without the Father right. telling me what to do. So yeah. I only say what he tells me to say. Right. I only pray what he tells me to yeah. pray. Right. So he, he if said, Jesus, I'm in him and he's in me. So if Jesus can't do anything right. without the Father, who are we to think that we can do anything of significance, of value without him? Right. Wow, that's a, that's powerful. So then it comes down to you. You can ask this in the world today of people: What is it that you're doing that has eternal value? Right. You know what's going to last beyond you. Well, I said that um, I want to read a few more verses because I said within this passage, and this is all Jesus teaching. Yeah. Jesus is you know Jesus is known as the most. Uh, uh, you know, the best teacher that ever walked the earth. And he's teaching people from, he is the word, the word made flesh. He's teaching people how to have the kingdom of God and God's plan for their life f operating in their life. So he already said that if we abide in him and we, the title today is, are you connected? So think about that. If we are abiding in him, that means we're connected to him. We, we check our reference points by right. him and what he says. He said, uh, the same brings forth much fruit. Well, what kind of fruit is he talking about? Any fruit you can imagine, you're going to bear much fruit in relationships, in uh, provision, you know, in witty inventions and exactly. finances, in healing. You bring forth the fruit of healing. You bring forth the fruit of restoration. The fruit of the Spirit, which is really uh, showing people, the, the fruit shows the, the connection between you and Him, because the fruit is Him in you. Well, when I look at an apple tree, I can tell it's an apple tree because of what the fruit looks like. Yeah. And so Jesus is very practical when he's trying to explain to us that if we are connected to him, if we're abiding in him, we're going to bear much fruit. Right. And the fruit that he's talking about is, is the seed is in the word of God. And so the more we plant the word of God, the promises of God, in our in our thinking in our lives then that fruit will come out in our life um, one sister told me that um, she had started recently going to bible school and she was so thankful for what she was learning from the word of god and specifically specifically um, the divine healing course and in the divine healing course they learned about all the promises they had for, that God gave us of healing that belonged to us. So then all of a sudden they're faced with a diagnosis of stage three cancer. And so they took that seed of healing mm -hmm. and planted it in their heart mm -hmm. and received a cancer free diagnosis. Right. Remem That's the kind remembering of fruit they had we're talking to, about. They had to turn their back on the other reference points. Yes. They had to believe it. Yeah. And they had to start confessing it and acting on it. And, and then they receive it. And get their life it. full of it. Yeah. yeah. And so they, they planted, 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 and then the harvest came right. out healing. Yeah. Which is exactly what Jesus said it would do. So let's read it again. Okay. I am the vine and you are the branches. He that abides in me, doesn't matter who it is. I don't see any stipulations. No. And I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. So say you need, uh, you know, you need restoration in your family. That's a seed. It's in the word. You plant it in your heart. You act on it and you'll receive the fruit of restoration. This is what we're talking about because we're talking about exportable faith. So you have to bring it right down to the basic common denominator so people understand how simple and practical faith really is yeah. and that it applies today to every area of your life. So listen to the next verse. So, um, if a man abide not in me, 
He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burned. Why? Well, because you know, they don't see anything happening in your life. So they're not going to take you seriously. You know, they're going to uh, ignore you. Sort of like brushing you to the side. Yeah. It's like, you know, you yeah. don't rate. Who are you? You've been canceled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's, that's sort of a, you know, he, Jesus is just saying, there is a consequence for not abiding in me. Right. But then he goes back to the positive and says, if you abide in me and what? My, my words, words abide. abide in you, you shall ask. Here we go with prayer. What you will or you desire and it shall be, it didn't say it might be. It didn't say if I think it's a good idea. It says it shall be done for you, to you. Okay, now here's the clincher. I just love this verse. It says, here in is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So you shall be my disciples. So it's amazing when are you connected? If you're abiding in the vine, if, if he's abiding in you and you're abiding in him, you're going to bring forth fruit. Right. He promised it. And then when you bring forth fruit, your life glorifies God. That's another way of saying your faith is exportable. People are going to come to you and say, I want what you've got. Yeah. How'd you get that? How do, how, how come everybody else is struggling and you're just always talking about being blessed? I want what you've got, you know, so your faith is exportable. And so this is what Jesus is simply practically teaching us about. I just think it's so powerful. Right. Amen. Right. So uh, the simplicity of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Mm -hmm. So that what that's telling you is the gospel of Jesus Christ is the seed that God put eternal life in. So let's tell the story. This story has been told over and over again about an, uh, uh, an immigrant Okay. Who was coming to the United States on a, a clipper, a, a ship. Right. You know, back in the day, it took like oh, seven days, two weeks to cross the Atlantic. Right. And so they bought a passage. They bought a ticket. And he um, brought his little suitcase and he had crackers and peanut butter and sardines, you know, in his, in his, in his suitcase. And uh, so it's the last day. Of the, uh, they're about to land at the shores in America, and he sees the captain, and the captain says, "Well, where have you been? We, you know, we haven't seen you at any of the meals. You know, uh, we've looked for you, and we haven't seen you." He said, "Oh, I brought my own food. I, 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 I you know, I didn't have the money to pay for meals." And he said, "Oh no," he said, "It was included." All your meals were included in the ticket. <laughs> so Jesus is telling us that when we are in abiding in him and he is abiding in us, you know, don't, for the journey, for the journey of life, for. it's paid for. And so when we don't accept his word, when we don't receive his promises, then we're leaving the food on the table. We're not receiving the benefits of what he died to give us and, we, we're and what our, his our word. crackers and peanut butter and sardines. Yeah, <laughs> which I like. Yeah. I really like it, but yeah. I don't know if I'd want to eat it every day for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so that whole point is, you know, we can live life according to God's design or we can try to struggle through trying to work things out on our own and figure it out our own way and have all this hardship and suffering when his principles, his word leads us into the light where everything is taken care of. Right. So uh, exportable faith. Uh, here's another little thing about faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus was the master teacher, which you said. Yes. And he taught us on faith. 
Now, it's funny, you know, when you when you listen to people talk about faith and then you listen to Jesus, the difference. Uh -huh. Well, the difference is, first of all, uh, he's Jesus is very simple and easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And he also talks about faith in a way that a lot of people just kind of leave it out. Right. Yeah. So I've got a great scripture to just kind of help us with, um, you know, this lesson on are you connected? Uh -huh. And so here it is in Hebrews chapter six. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm gonna read three verses. Uh, and so the writer is saying, therefore leaving the principles or the basics of the doctrine of Christ, <coughs> let us go on to perfection or maturity. Right. Not laying again the foundation, see, you know, if you're going to grow, yeah. if you're going to bear fruit, right. you can't just keep digging up and building a new foundation. Yeah, he, he's going to work with you. He's going to build on the foundation. A foundation, and then he's going to build on it. He's going to build on That's how you grow, <coughs> is building on the foundation. So he says, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, you know, Trying and to work for your salvation. Trying That's to what work that for it. Faith towards God. <coughs> These are foundational basics mm -hmm. of the doctrine of baptisms. These are all true foundational teachings yeah. of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead. All these things we know and accept. And believe. And of eternal judgment. Okay, so this is the foundation. Right. Then he says... And this we will do if God permit. So basically what he's saying is uh, d this is the basics. These are the foundations. And uh, we need to have those in our lives. Right. So if you're connected, it's going to be obvious with your foundation. Right. Because and people that have a foundation are not shaken. Exactly. And he's talking about... So if we have this foundation in our life, so think about the things we've talked about. Is your faith exportable? Do you have Bible literacy? Right. Are you, uh, are you growing? Do you want to grow? Because Bible, spiritual growth and all other areas of life are all linked together. There's no such thing as here's my real life right. and then here's my spiritual life. You know, real life is spiritual. Right. with God, you know, and it affects every other area of our life. So um, foundational, it means that we're going to mature and continue to grow and develop to the point that we'll be teaching and leading other people, bringing them along with us, adding to the kingdom, yeah. uh, increasing in stature and wisdom and favor with God and man, just like Jesus did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so life is working when we're being completed, but we can't be completed if we don't have our foundation laid. Right. And so how many people out there... And so God, see, the Apostle Paul called himself a master builder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he, he knew this. Jesus the same. You know, once God lays a foundation in a person's life, he's not going to act like it's not there. He's going to go ahead and start the building project. Okay, so let's talk a little more about what it means to be connected. What happens? Um, I keep thinking about an image of electricity, you know, and, and you know, it's, you know, you try to, you try to make something happen and it's not plugged in. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you realize. Or the connection is not made. Yes. Or your Wi-Fi is down. Well, the, <laughs> you know, the, the vine is a perfect example of the same thing. If the branch is connected, then mm -hmm. the life of the vine is going to be in the branch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Jesus uh, talked about it bearing fruit. So God the Father is he's the husbandman jesus said i'm the vine and you're the branches so your father is going to be working on this thing of getting you uh, connected to the point where you're going to bear fruit 
and the fruit is going to be evident to people that are watching. So if your faith, so the, our, our series title is Exportable Faith. So are you connected means, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's like a constant flow. You know, you also do have to do some inspecting. Okay. To make sure that um, the connection is good. Yeah. You know, the power is running. Right. And so in, when you're going to be ministering to other people, right. it, it has to be a constant flow. So if a person is a Christian and they don't have any fruit, mm -hmm. then they do need to start digging around the foundation and see, you know, what, what is missing here? What, what's... And that doesn't happen alone, does it? No. Are you connected in another way to the body of Christ? Right. Because that's, as you get to know God, you find out that his plan yeah. is that we are a body. Right. He called us a body. He talked about the fact that he is the head and we are the members. Right. So being connected also doesn't mean that you're just out there, you know, getting your own revelation, you know, by yourself, because none of the reason why we're connected is so life is flowing, not only in us, but through us. Right. And into other people's lives S and situations. Right. So part of the fruit of our lives is going to be other people hearing and receiving and being born again uh, themselves as a result of our testimony. So what causes a disconnect? Sometimes, uh, you know, circumstances, yeah. like we had the big uh, time of, of the COVID where people right. were disconnected. Dis they disconnected. They cut off the power, yeah. cut the line. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, people that were able to connect through uh, an online service, were able to stay connected to getting their faith built up, being taught the Word of God, so right. they can go out. See, it's not just for you to be a church t attender. The whole reason why you're connected and you hear the Word and the Gospel is so that it's it connects you with your purpose and God's plan for your life. Right. And so if you're out there by yourself and, the, and you, your reference points are people who are uh, making fun of the gospel, making fun of Bible faith, yeah. making fun of your stand for issues and things that the world is just... Uh, yeah. So when that happens, it should be recognizable that you've drifted over into darkness. Exactly. Drifting is a very good word. Yeah. You know, or... It happens to people. They drift away. Mm -hmm. So this could be a, uh, a call out to those of you who feel like you've been disconnected. Or, uh, it's time to get reconnected. It's time to um, get yourself in a local church, to get involved, to uh, begin to, uh, you know, they, they said about the Bereans that they were more, more noble, noble than the Thessalonians because they would listen to somebody teach, but then they'd go looking to see if it w really was in the Bible. Is that really in the Bible? Right. And then when they read it for themselves, then they were more committed to operate in that. Right. So that's what we want to exhort you uh, today through this whole series is, is your faith something that um, is exportable to right. others that can help them get on the right path to get healing in their life, to get deliverance in their life, you'll have to do an assessment uh, yourself and see, am I meeting up to the standard? And then it's an easy thing to just make that reconnection. And we hope and pray that you will do that. Um, we have a few more things to show you, and then we'll be right back just to share some closing thoughts. Landmarks Bible Institute invites you to come celebrate with our FLBI students and graduates at this year's FLBI graduation on June 2nd at 7 p.m. For more information, head over to flbi.org.
bored. All we do every Sunday is sit around and watch TV, and I'm tired of it. Me too. I asked my friend Billy to play outside with me, and he said he has to go to Kids Town, whatever that means. Did somebody say Kids Town? Where did you come from? Not important. Look, we overheard your conversation. And we wanted to invite you personally to Kids Town. What's Kids Town? I'm glad you asked. <clears throat> I know it may seem silly to listen Wait, to... why are you singing? What? It's the, it's the best way to explain things. Don't you love it when they do it in Veggie Tales? What's Veggie Tales? <gasps> it's worse than we thought. Music! I know it may seem silly to listen to a puppet, but if you come to Kids Town, I'm sure that you'd love it. Let's go on an adventure, it won't take all day. Put Jesus at the center, what do you say? This is where we film a lot of the skits for Kids Town. They help teach us about Jesus, and they're also really funny. You should come and invite all your friends. Playing games, having fun, learning scripture, you should come. With on-time messages, exciting events, an active children's ministry and youth group, Bible school, and much more, there will always be something for you and your family. Visit our website at faithlandmarks.org. Welcome back again, and we're really glad that you've joined us today, and we want to let you know that you're welcome to come back at any time and be a part of contact. That's right. But uh, let's just uh, wrap up with a few final thoughts. You know, you foundational principles that we've just talked about need to be in your life because nothing else, else works right if you do not have those in place. But the other thing we want to encourage you about is that growth is a process. And so don't be too judgmental or hard on yourself. Um, you know, that's not what we're talking about. The point is, is for you to get up and go and have life like God meant it to be, for you to be blessed, bearing fruit, um, bringing others into the kingdom and having people uh, receive from what you believe from God's word. And so we just want to encourage you uh, to build on that foundation and grow in your faith and glorify God as a fruit bearing Christian. God bless you. And we will see you back next time on contact.